Hi guys, um, I'm going to give you a presentation on uh, a little introduction into how you can quickly generate an extra income from what is known as multi level or network marketing. Um, I'm not going to assess your exposure to it because, in doing so, I may embarrass someone because it's a sensitive, it's a sensitive subject when somebody responds to that in favour, saying an extra income, it's a sort of condition that they're a little bit desperate. Uh, and a lot of people don't want to get involved in it because they might think it's a scam, they might think all sorts of things about it because <coughs> in network marketing we tend to use blind advertising in particular for that reason. So we don't say what it is, but because we don't say what it is, because we know that people have um, preconceived ideas about what they think is the earning potential, they, we, we go blind and then because we go blind it generates more scepticism. So I, I don't want to make put anybody in position of discomfort by sort of assessing what you know about the subject. So I'm just going to go straight into it. And the aim is to give you an overview of how one particular company uses the business model of network marketing to generate income for thousands of people and to give you a little bit of self-belief that, that if it's something that you ever want to get involved in, sometime in the future, you can just dive into it. So for example, Clean Easy is 90 years old next year. So as far as pedigree and integrity is concerned, it's absolutely not an issue and it is not a scam. Uh, more than 50% of the ads that you see in the classified ads in the newspaper and marks might be clean easy distributors. But we're all independent distributors. Nobody works directly for clean easy. So everybody's self-employed, taking responsibility for, for the progr progress of their own business. Um, so you know now if you see these ads, that they're, they're likely to be clean easy. They could be able. So the Americans call it multi-level marketing, uh, in UK we call it network marketing. Um, networking is probably a more logical name for it because what we do is we create a network. The business has two levels at which it can, it can generate an income. And the first is, is retail. Um, in any business of any type, uh, the only way you can generate an income is to move a product uh, or add a value in some way. Um, so, we would encourage anybody, even as a future millionaire, to learn and understand the retail side of the business. And then there's the sponsoring side of the business, or recruitment side of the business, uh, in which we, we either bump into people by accident who may benefit from what we're already doing, or we actively go looking for people who might want an opportunity along the way. And then the third simple step of what we do is we teach that off. We do, we do the opposite of what modern academia uh, insists upon, which is we copy. We promote copying. Plagiarism is the way to succeed in this business. We always say, don't, don't reinvent the wheel. Um, Clean Easy's been around for nearly 90 years. Uh, it's been a network marketing company since the early 70s. And there's a system there. And the people who implement the system completely have massive success. People who dip their toe in the water, people who, for whatever reason, don't commit fully, fail. And they're the ones who give clean easy about it. Not the ones who make the success out of it. But unfortunately, they're the ones who usually get PR by word of mouth. You go, oh, I'm not such a such, you said, I've already got involved in network marketing, and it's a scam, you can't make any money at it. Well, you can. <laughs> so, that, that's, the, that's the goal, is to work around these three simple principles, and, uh, to give you, at the end of the session, some sort of self-belief and some sort of knowledge about the industry that you can help help break down those barriers that it's not a scam and if you want to do something, that's the third party approach that we use, do you, do you know anyone who uses it? Because if I walk up to a stranger in the street and I say, do you need an extra income? He said, I'm a scruffy, do I look like I need an extra income? They might be insulted. Um, whereas if everybody in the room knows a little bit more about how network marketing works and they have a friend in trouble, they might want to, to recommend it. So that's that's one of the objectives, that you know enough about the business to be able to say, yeah, I know a little bit, I know it works. If it's for you, get involved. <coughs> so, retail. One of the first things we do is we've got a catalogue in front of the customer. Now, there's lots of ways of doing this. Um, we, we 
Primarily, I was taught to, to walk up on kickoff or cattle or further levels in the street. Simple exercise that, that means you need absolutely no skills. You can, you can just pull up cattle or through a level. Two days later, then you can worry about going asking for it back. But even then, you're just asking for it back. You're not a salesman. You're not asking them if they want to do anything. You just turn the catalog back. And miraculously, five to ten percent of the people are sold. Okay, so we've got a little exercise for you. If you'd all like to come forward and take one of each of the five items on the desk. inspired to think is the best way to put them together. Actually, an established correct way. However, with the massive amount of experience within the Green Easy Network, there is better ways and, and worse ways to do this. And, and there's lots of reasons behind what we do, why we do what we do. Um, Alison, is there any particular thought pattern you went through when you put those catalogs together in mind? Uh, I put the spring special on the top because it's talking about making savings.
we would all be pleased with that. And it may well be that one month previous the customer actually saw the front cover of that catalogue, because this catalogue has been available since January. Uh, and that, the reason we do this is it's very similar to any other retailer in any, in any other retail business. We have a core range of products and we have a seasonal range of products. We have to cater to people who might run a consumable item, something like a leather cream that they run out of, they love it, they want some more, they want to be able to find it again. But we have other customers who are more opportunities so that we can provide them. And we have to appeal to both. So strategically, I will put the catalogue together back to back. And the reason they're back to back is it's very anal. Uh, if you've got a stack of catalogues and they're all the same way and they're all different one side than the other, the stack falls over. <laughs> it's as simple as that. So the reason we put them back to back is we try to counteract that effect, that effect in the stack. Then we put the order form facing to what, what is technically the back, but it's the front if it falls up in the porch that way. Um, and it's important that our contact details are at the top. Because clean, easy, we're all independent. A customer can, every so often, get a catalogue from two different distributors in one week. I want them to know whose catalogue this one is. So I'm going to see the names. And then we'll, we use the remaining blank space, the space that's essentially insignificant, to put that. So there's important information everywhere. Try to distribute it around the pack so people know when we're coming back, they know we're looking for people in the area, they know who the catalogue's from, and they know what they're on. But you've all sort of gone through a thought pattern, whether it's a thought pattern with some experience in the business or a thought of just some sort of logic as to, as to how you put them in the pack. Yeah? Okay, but everybody has to do that. Even the two million of I know you played easy, I've done that sometimes. Then we collect the catalogues, we go back to the catalogues. Pretty simple. <coughs> then we go back to the ones we didn't get. Um, statistically speaking, if we put 100 catalogues out, we might get 70, 75 catalogues back when we go back to the one we got them. So there's 25 catalogues there and there's 200 of our trade. We don't leave out, if we're a plumber, we don't leave spanners that are lying around because we need them. Um, so we go back. If the customer's not in and we don't take any action, they don't know we've been, there's the potential risk that they look at the catalogue that says Thursday and it's Friday, it says that person's unreliable because there's no, there's no indication that we knocked on the door the day and they were in. So we always put a little, sorry I missed you, no through, saying when we'll be back. And that's a really valuable mechanism for getting the catalogue back. So they begin to appear on the doorsteps and eventually you get 95% of the catalogues back on it, on the first attempt. Um, and then we, we order the bulk items. So we've got several customers' orders, we've got a pal building up. Uh, for the effectiveness of the business, we would, we would go over a certain limit so that when the items come to us from Clean Easy Head Office, we don't get charged any additional carriage, so we want to qualify for free carriage. But that's not necessarily important at, the, at this point in the explanation. And then we take those goods out to the customers. That's essentially what Clean Easy distributors are getting paid for. Finding orders, delivering delivering that service. Now everybody wants a service, whether they go on Argos online or whether they order something from Clean Easy Catalog. Part of the service is it's coming to the door. Um, there's alternative methods of payment um, and, and that's what they want. So the Clean Easy distributor, that's how they're deriving their income. Their income is simply the difference between the wholesale value and the retail value. Uh, however, there is a bonus structure that can increase Clean Easy and then you just repeat it. You just repeat it over and over and over again. And some people can't hack that monotony, and I'm one of them. So um, what I do is very much a roller coaster. Um, I do some things when I want to do them, and I do other things when I don't want to do them. But that's the advantage of having your own business. It's flexible. You want to do as much as you want, or as little as you want. <coughs> so. Um, We need to we need to keep records because what we're doing when we randomly put a catalogue through somebody's letterbox is we're getting involved in market research. So we put a catalogue through somebody's letterbox on 
day one or week one or month one. And we go to street whatever. And we go to house two, four, six, eight, ten. Amazing how many people don't know why that system occurs. Does everybody know why we have our on one side, people on the other side? Is it postman exercise? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's because it, it, some, some way, way back when the post office and somebody else decided that if a street's part built and there is a possible and a street ends, ends at a field, for example, and that street's further developed, if the house numbers went one, two, three, four, five, and then back up the street, then the numbers wouldn't line up. But as long as you always have odds and evens, you can extend the length of the street, but still have a logical number sequence. So the only times you ever see sequential numbering on houses, you've probably never even thought of this, is when you get a small new cul-de-sac that's completely landlocked, and they could never build any more houses on it, and the houses literally might go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Apart from that, it's usually all on one side, even the other. Just an interesting little fact. A lot of boring little fact, whichever, whichever way you see it. But you put a catalogue through a letterbox, there are four things that can happen when you go back for it. Rebecca, can you tell me what? Why didn't buy? 
So come up with all sorts of excuses. So many times they give you catalogue back, say, I'll buy something next month, but don't. And it's it. Because they'd rather tell you what they think you want to hear rather than the truth so that you can get on with what you're doing. Okay, so we've gone, done a little bit about record keeping. And I'm going to give you a little task to do. Okay, it's not massive. Okay, but assume you've got 50 catalogs. Assume you've got two hours a day available to run an extra income. You'd be desperate. You're already working full time, but you're in some trouble and you need an extra 50 quid a week. It'll make a massive difference to your income profile, and you could prefer to go out for two hours every evening rather than watching the tell. So you've got 50 catalogs, two hours. It takes about one minute. No. It takes about one hour to drop 100 catalogs, and it takes about 1.5 hours to collect 100 catalogs. Okay. Collect. And for some of the it falls. Well, that's it. In your groups, just think for three minutes what you would do in your first eight days in the business. questions out here if you're struggling with anything. As many as you like, but your constraint is you possess 50 catalogs. As far as six days.
have to stop now. I'm on that side. <laughs> Is everybody up to four days? Yes.
Yeah. So the the comparison is, if you want to drop 50 calories every day, you need to possess more than 50 calories. That's where you'll go yeah. with that one. <laughs> <laughs> you want it to be max, uh, as productive as possible, yeah. but but that's that's a business investment, and that's that's the decision. teachings based on the fact that if you want to be valued more and you want to be paid more then you have to become more valuable so the only way you can get paid more money for, for a 40-hour week is by getting promoted essentially by bettering yourself however in this type of Like drop statistics, if you collect 1200 catalogues in your first four weeks, that's a clean easy number. Your first four weeks in the business, based on like it drop statistics of 50 pence of return per catalogue on random like it dropping, you get 600 pounds worth of orders. That's worth 125 pounds worth of income that could make a significant difference to somebody for an extra 30 pounds a week just for a couple of hours over the course of a week. However, the compound effect says in the second month. This first drop, you've already begun to eliminate people who've thrown your catalogue away, or wasted your time in one way or another, or not looked at your catalogue. So it only takes the same 800 catalogues. So you say, well, I prefer to do the same amount of work. What will I do? I'll put 400 catalogues out to a second drop in another street, another town, whatever. And this 800.
said earlier, whether we do that by actually actively advertising or passively bumping into people who need the opportunity to join the business, ultimately to join the business. And what you're doing is you're growing your family because it's network marketing. Anybody who joins this business as a result of your interaction contributes to your future income, I'll show you how. If you just introduce one person a month, your family changes a little bit. You've got one extra person. And they're connected to you. And you're connected to Clean Easy or your other client who introduced you to the business. So this is just an indication of the non compound effect. This is what we call power of zero. It still has a positive benefit in the fact that all of these people contribute to your income depending on their level of activity. And their level of activity is based on the motivation that you give them as their upline and the information about the business that you give them as your upline. So it's all constantly your, your, your responsibility in the network marketing business to take the state of the art from above and the success from above transfer it downwards. And that success reduces your income. However, there's another Brother, sister, friend, relative, all of you get a little bit enthusiastic, start putting out in shopping doors, which is free, whereas as the newspapers is, is costly and you have to decide at what level you want to grow the business. You can grow it fast and invest a lot of time and effort. You can grow it slow for it's essentially what is essentially zero investment. So two people join the business. But they wouldn't have been in the business if it wasn't for you. So these people are linked. And this little team is your network, your family. And it has a turnover of 1,800 pounds, not 600. And what Clean Easy say is, well, you've got your 125. Liz has got her 125, or whatever she joined the business for. Phil's got his 125. But your team generates a bonus of 150 pounds. So you're getting paid for the same four-week period. You're not retailed anymore. Well, you've got 275 pounds. You've doubled your income because you're getting involved in the networking side of the business, the sponsoring side of the business. I know this gets really exciting. Is once you're accomplished, we, we would encourage people to find approximately a thousand pounds of the every four weeks. Because it's, it, it's, it's teachable, it's sustainable, and it's, it, it's something that people can still do in the full time in the business. People who are ongoing and saying, well, I'm learning about this business, I'm getting involved in the sponsoring side, or I'm not bidding me full time.
having a New Year's in shop and being on the golf course while you've got a manager away. You're earning money, doing nothing. So the money that's coming from this is purely motivated by each of these individuals' desire to earn their extra income for what they want it for. People join Bleed Easy to save up for weddings, people join Bleed Easy to pay off student debt, people join Bleed Easy for all sorts of reasons, and their motivation is their problem. It's not our problem, and their financial relationship with Bleed Easy is a direct one. So our, our, our only thing to do as a sponsor of this business is to find people and show them motive. Simple as that, no financial risk. Talk about the customer or the person you sponsor to the business. The person you sponsor to the business. Right. The, the advantage is that councils out that disadvantage is yes, people say they want an extra income and then they do nothing. But people come along who do want an extra income. And providing you can just fill in the blanks and show them what to do, their enthusiasm and their motivation isn't your worry. And they carry on doing what they're doing without you having to tell them 
or help them or anything. Um, somebody might join your business just as you're becoming disheartened and think it doesn't work. Somebody might join and do more than you ever did. And as long as you're still there and you're still between them and Lady Easy, you're going to benefit from that relationship. Right? Uh, and on, on your, the, the point you raised about statistics, which is a good one, in a regular job, you turn up a regular amount of hours for a regular amount of money. In exchange, what you forfeit is the surplus profit that the managing director, the company owner, or the board of, of shareholders get at the end. Right? By having your own business, what you do is you accept that flexibility, that lack of rigid income. Yes, it's commission based, and a lot of people go, it's commission based. If people reject a commission based opportunity, it's potentially because they don't have the faith in their own ability to make it work. Because if you, if you look at, do you want a hundred pound a week, or do you want a commission based opportunity that gives you fifty pound a week if you want to perform, or hundred and fifty pound a week if you do a reasonable amount? What you're telling somebody is they can earn fifty percent more if they try, or fifty percent less if they don't, and the choice is theirs. But the conventional job isn't for everybody because they're not in control of their own life. You're working towards somebody else's goal. See the more positive side that I'm, I'm trying to get over. <laughs> ah, that's where you're actually wrong. Because he's a managing director reporting directly to a company and he gets a salary. Only the net worth is commission based. Corporate clean easy are salaries. So they're just running the business, providing the products. So Jamie Stewart's there in Blackburn making sure that that ticks. And that warehouse is bringing the product in, generating a catalogue on a repeat basis, updating the catalogue, making sure that the bad, bad selling products are discontinued and replaced with something better, and poor quality products are replaced with something better. That's his job. To get those products out of that warehouse and into somebody's house is the job of the network. And the only person raking it in as a result of, for example, my activity is somebody called Rob Walsh, who lives in Sheffield, is a millionaire. But he's a millionaire because he's introduced thousands of people to this business. And help them change their life in whatever way. If somebody says to me, they want an extra 50 pound a week and I can show them a way of help them, I'm not exploiting them. And then in turn, that person could be introducing someone to the business you've never even met. So yes, he's, he's, he's now getting paid on the efforts of people he's, he doesn't know. But it would never have happened if he hadn't taken those first steps. And he'd be taking the decision to be good at it. So the ones who are rich make more than they it's, it's in proportion to the efforts. That's the power of network marketing. The results are in proportion to the efforts. Um, so just to recap, that's what we do. We retail, we sponsor, and we teach people to retail and sponsor. And we duplicate. And we cheat as much as we can. And we go to little mini conferences and little mini meetings. There's meetings on a Manchester level, there's meetings on a regional level, and we clean these and put on <coughs> And we copy off what successful people do. Uh, and the only reason we don't achieve, or if we don't achieve what they achieve, it's either because they do something that we find uncomfortable so we don't do it, or they do something for more hours and we think that's unreasonable so we do less hours. But the, for everything in this business, there's a model. If you follow the model, you get some success. The extent to which you follow it and the accuracy to which you follow it. Christine, I would like these back, but you don't have to put your name on them. It's also an anonymous feedback. So while you're doing it, who thinks they can refer to the catalog? How long do you think it'll take? I have a question, but can you read it again? No, no, don't fire away. Okay. Um, okay, so this is part of marketing. Um, eBay shop. 
No, because what, what we do is we stick with state of the art, and this again is, is Clean Easy Head Office's job, because to keep their brand out there, they're responsible for stuff like nationwide TV advertising. Uh, they're responsible for massive internet infrastructure. So what we've, what we've gone through over the last year and a half, for example, is having an online shop in our name, for example, mycleaneasy.com forward slash trainer, where people can specifically look at a catalogue and select something, then make contact and order that product online. So that's pitching us against ours online, for example. And then they've gone the next step where you can actually click through, select the goods, and the infrastructure actually passes the information to either your local distributor if you haven't selected, or if you enter a code or a name, that all is automatically attributed to a particular distributor. So the goods are delivered to the door in a conventional clean easy way, but you've had the luxury of ordering online just as you would with eBay. So we've sort of, we've made, we, we've gone for the, the best possible compromise between the e-commerce model and the original clean easy personal touch model. That's it. 